This big bench plan right here is the Lee Nielsen number seven. Now the Lee Nielsen number seven bench plane is a jointer plane, which makes it ideal for flattening uh, boards and truing edges. Due to its long length, which is 22 inches, and its mass, eight and a quarter pounds, it does an awesome job uh, at doing that. Let me go ahead and show you a close up of the features and adjustments on this huge plane, and then uh, show you how I make use of it in my shop. The Lee Nielsen bench plane has a cherry knob and tote, uh, and I really like the height of the knob. It's nice and high, so it's easy to grab uh, and doesn't get in the way of the rest of the plane. Brass cap iron here at the front, which easily pops off. Uh, and then an improved Lee Nielsen chip breaker and blade, two and three-eighths inches wide, uh, but really thick, uh, three and a half millimeter thick blade has a brass frog which is adjustable and also interchangeable for different angles. It's got adjustments here at the back for advancing and retracting the blade and of course lateral adjustment for shifting the blade left and right. And of course it's a Lee Nielsen hand plane so the fit and finish uh, is tremendous. Uh, it's just a beautiful beautiful hand plane both to view and of course to use. Now the frog is adjustable on this hand plane and that is how you'd either open or close the mouth opening. Uh, open it to allow a thicker shaving to pass through or tighten it down uh, if you want to let just tiny shavings come through there. To adjust that frog, simply come in here and loosen the screws on either side. And then go ahead and make an adjustment here at the center screw. We'll just tighten that down and close up that mouth opening so it's super tight and then go ahead and just lock down these screws again. Now what's cool is you can do all that while your blade is installed so you can see exactly uh, how tight uh, an opening you're creating or how loose you're making it. Now not only is the frog adjustable forward and backward for opening and closing that mouth, it's also interchangeable for different angles. I currently have installed a 50 degree frog, uh, which is a good medium level in between uh, a 45 degree frog, which is this one here, uh, which is great for domestic hardwoods, uh, all the way up to a 55 degree frog, and that is great for getting into highly figured woods to stop it from tearing out. Uh, to, to change the frog, you simply Take out those same, uh, loosen those same two adjustment screws right at the back, uh, and then this frog simply pops out. Uh, you can put in the new one and then tighten those two screws back down. Now the Lee Nielsen blade and chip breaker is a huge chunk of metal uh, for plowing through uh, that material. Here at the tip, it's almost, uh, it's just over a quarter inch wide, those two together, uh, which is just awesome. And it's two and three eighths inches wide uh, all the way across that blade. Uh, the new improved chip breaker uh, has a little section at the front which makes contact across the blade. So here's the chip breaker and just this little strip here is making great contact all the way across the blade. You can just make out it's a little bit higher and so that section there is what is contacting the blade all the way across nice very beefy really heavy um, chip breaker there and of course Lee Nielsen blade uh, comes in 01 or A2 steel uh, and is very sharp right out of the box ready to go but of course a little additional honing uh, will make it that much sharper let me go ahead and show you the final adjustments I make uh, to tune this up and how I use it in my shop first I'll make sure that the blade is honed razor sharp ready to go uh, and then I'll set my chip breaker just back from the front edge, somewhere between a 16th and a 32nd. Uh, then I'll go ahead and make sure my frog is adjusted. Uh, I don't leave the throat super tight. I usually back it up uh, a little bit, allow uh, various thickness of shavings to come through. If I'm really de dealing with some highly figured stuff, uh, then I might go ahead and close down that throat just that little bit more uh, to really avoid tear out. Now when you do uh, make the adjustment as I showed you on the frog, uh, it's on a ramped, uh, it's on a, the frog's on a ramp, so if you uh, move it forward to close the mouth, you're going down that ramp and the blade's really gonna start sticking out. So the next step is to make sure your blade is set uh, at the right depth. 
So what I do is grab a thin piece of stock, uh, anything that's really well behaved, uh, softwood is preferable and this will help me set uh, the depth of my blade and also make lateral adjustments. So right now, I'm not taking any shaving, so I'll just keep dialing that forward there. Just got a shaving right out of the center of this blade. Now what I'll go ahead and do is check left to right. So there on my right side, about equal thickness. Here on the left, no shaving at all. So there I'll go ahead and make an adjustment using the lateral adjuster here at the back and try to get the left side just poking through. And then I'll go back and forth, check the right side, check the left side, and slowly make lateral adjustments to get them even. Now, of course, it depends if you've got a camber on your blade. Uh, and I have a very slight one, so it should just be tailing off at the left and right and be a little bit thinner shaving at the left and right and a little bit thicker right there in the center. There, now I'm no longer doing it on the right. Now another thing that I found, uh, sometimes when I'm getting close, that lateral adjustment has just a little bit of play. Sometimes I'll grab uh, a small hammer and just make little adjustments using that. So I'll just tap that blade and I find I can make really, really tight adjustments, very fine adjustments with that blade. So now on the right hand side, tiny shaving, left hand side, tiny shaving, and right down the center, slightly sh thicker shaving. Now I'm set to go. Okay, now that I've got my jointer plane tuned up, how am I going to make use of it in my shop? Well, I'm a power tool guy. I have a jointer and a power planer, thickness planer, and that's what I use for dimensioning my lumber. I'm not doing that by hand. But I'll use a jointer plane typically for three things, three different scenarios. One is that my board is too wide for my jointer. Uh, so I've got a board that's wider than eight inches, which is my jointer. Uh, I'll go ahead and maybe use my jack plane first for getting it roughly flat, and then I might pull out this jointer plane for really flattening one side uh, before running it through my thickness planer. That's one thing I'll use it for. Another thing I'll use it for is even after it goes through the jointer and planer, you end up with a lot of mill marks on the board uh, from the joint turn planer, those knives really just hitting this wood. Uh, and it's not quite as flat as you might expect. So again, I'll pull out my jointer plane on that board uh, and do some passes. And I'm pretty much doing that every time I'm using my joint turn planer. I'm then following up with the jointer plane on that board. The third thing I'll use a jointer plane for is chewing up edges, especially when I'm going to do a glue up. If I want to join these two boards together, I want to make sure that those, ed those edges are perfectly straight, flat, uh, to give me a really nice glue surface all the way end to end. And again, I'll pull out my jointer plane to do that. So take a look at this board of walnut and look at the mill marks coming off of the jointer and the planer. Here you can see, especially right here at this end, look at these marks going straight across the board. This is straight off either my jointer or my planer, those straight knives pounding against the wood leave these mill marks all the way across. It's also not quite as flat as you would expect, so I'll pull out the jointer plane and go ahead and clean that up. You can even hear the mill marks uh, as it's jumping across them. Now I might take a couple of diagonal passes just to make sure I'm keeping this nice and flat. and finally clean it up with some straight passes. And now I'm pretty good to go. There's definitely still some plane tracks 
going across here. Uh, but this is my jointer plan. I'm not expecting it to be ready for finish or anything like that yet. I just want to make sure to clean up major mill marks and get it uh, nice and flat. So at this page, stage, I'd be ready to do any of my joinery work to this board. Uh, and then I would come back with my smoothing plane uh, to get it ready for finishing. No more mill marks and that walnut is starting to come to life. Now say I want to join these two boards together in a glue up. I want to make sure that these edges are nice and flat all the way end to end and that they're perfectly 90 to the face. So when I glue them together, I'm going to get a great glue joint and the two faces will be uh, perfectly flat all the way across. And again, I'll use a jointer plane to do that. Now, if I'm going to have these uh, glued up this way uh, as a panel, uh, a trick you can do is joint them at the same time. Then it doesn't matter if you're perfectly 90 between this edge and this face because you have a complementary angle between this, this joint and this joint, uh, between this edge and this edge, uh, so it'll add to 180 degrees. So you simply take your boards, flip it down, and put them in the vise together, and then go ahead and line them up so you've got them really close, and then we'll just joint them at the same time. Tighten it down. Now we'll just join both of these at the same time. Now there you can see I'm just uh, getting a shaving from one of them. So I'll take a few passes, still mostly just from that one. And there I was getting two at the end. And then I'll just go end to end. Now I'm getting shavings from both of them all the way across. Now I know that I'm good and flat all the way across. Now to get a little bit of a sprung joint, which leaves a little bit gap in the center, nice and tight at the edges, which is great, then when you glue it up, um, you just pull the, the uh, center together and you know that your two ends will be nice and together. So let's take an extra pass, one in the center, and maybe one three quarters of the length. And now I know I've just got a tiny, tiny dip right there in the center for a nice sprung joint. So there is the Lee Nielsen number seven bench plane, and I pull this out on every single project. There's nothing faster than cleaning up mill marks uh, on your boards than pulling out this guy, quickly shooting through those boards. You saw how fast it was doing that piece of walnut. Uh, 30 seconds or so, cleaning up the mill marks uh, and ready to start my joinery. So this is coming out on every single project to do that. Uh, I also use it on the edges of boards uh, for getting them, whether it's a panel glue up like I showed, or getting them 90 to the face, again, ready for joinery. I'm not sure my jointer is exactly 90 uh, to my face, it's very close, or my table saw making uh, rip cuts, uh, is it exactly 90? It's pretty close, but this guy allows me to dial that right in. Uh, I, then I'll follow this up, uh, you know, of course, after doing all my joinery, I'll pull out a smoother plane uh, and then uh, maybe moving on to some sandpaper after that. You saw how easy it was to make the adjustments, how I do it. Um, they're super easy uh, to get into, um, easy to uh, advance the blade even as you're going. Uh, just put your fingers there, you can go forward and back uh, really easily. Uh, the adjustments for changing the frog, I have the 50 degree frog here in mind and the reason is to me, it's a good compromise between domestic hardwoods and figured woods. I use both in my shop. So I've got the 50 in here now. If I'm doing a project with a lot of domestic woods, I'll go ahead and swap this uh, for the 45. Uh, I also use, the other reason that I have this is that I'll use my four and a half smoother. And it is the same frog uh, in the four and a half that it is in the number seven jointer. And therefore, uh, I've got the 55 in here now. If I'm using uh, more just domestic hardwoods, I'll put the 50 in here, 45 in the jointer, uh, so I can use them in combination and it works really, really well. The jointer plane, of course, is a Lee Nielsen hand plane. Uh, it's of the highest quality. It's awesome. Uh, the fit and finish, of course, is unbelievable. Perfectly 90 between uh, the bed and the sides. Um, and so it is just a gorgeous plane. If you, haven't, uh, if you don't have a jointer plane, uh, I highly recommend the number seven. Uh, there's also the number eight, which is a longer, heavier jointer plane. It's almost 10 pounds, I think. And that thing really is a beast. If you get a chance to see them side by side, uh, the number eight is huge. I think the number seven is a good compromise between uh, weight and length uh, and works really well in almost all situations that you could use the number eight for as well. But if you don't have a jointer plane, uh, I highly recommend getting a jointer plane. It's going to make your work that much better. Not only cleaning up mill marks, but making sure everything is really flat 
and straight and true before starting your joinery. It's going to make your projects that much better. <music>